change. In the past three months, value is outpacing growth by about 3%. And my next guests say, you need to get on the value train for 2021. For more, let's welcome in Nancy Priol, the co-CEO and senior portfolio manager at Essex Investment Management. And David Katz is president and chief investment officer at Matrix Asset Advisors. Nancy, I'll start with you. Um, so is it specific companies? Is it value kind of writ large, which is always a, a tricky, I think, play from a sector point of view? I mean, where specifically would you point people? So we think it is both specific companies as well as certain segments of the market that have been neglected, not only over this past pandemic year, but really over the last 10 years, as we've seen a significant outperformance of highly visible, highly visible secular growth stories over perhaps less well-recognized, less well-visible areas um, that can be classified as either value stocks or perhaps as growth stocks that are selling at very inexpensive valuations. Those would be some of the building block companies in areas like hardware in the technology area, areas like suppliers into many of the industrials, some of the areas in consumer discretionary, some of the financials, even some areas in healthcare, like on the services and the um, diagnostics and on the um, equipment side that have not been exploited as the more open-ended, more clearly recognized names and say biotech, specialty pharma, software, internet, et cetera. Yeah, I know you. a lot of your favorites are in the small cap space. I think that's yeah. a good place for people to look for some of these themes and values. David, what about you also kind of thinking that growth just can't continue this performance into 2021? Uh, Bloomberg puts out an interesting chart. They look at growth versus value. And right now we're about four standard deviations over value to the growth side. So statistically, that happens less than 0.1 percent of the time. So we think it's going to reverse. The other thing that's happening is a lot of value areas of the market, a lot of value sectors. We think the stars are aligning for them to do a lot better. You have the covid vaccine. Uh, it's going to make the economy return to normalcy. You have an improving economy. The regulatory and political environment we think is very good. And interestingly, a lot of value stocks did very well this year in terms of their businesses. The stocks have been left in, in, you know, in the lurch. Uh, financials are a great example. We think that financials are going to do very well this year. Their loan portfolios are good. The uh, yield curve is steepening. Uh, Janet Yellen, Yellen, as the head of the Treasury, is a net positive. So we think all of those things are good, yet it's the cheapest area of the market by a lot. We think the dividends are safe. We'll start to grow again ne next year. And we think people are going to seek those out. So we expect a lot of money to flow in, and you want to get in there early. Yeah, so U.S. Bank... Uh, Pinnacle West, Gilead, and the healthcare front, Verizon and Coca-Cola. You know, a lot of investors listening, Nancy, will say I have a hard time getting excited about those names. We heard Bob Bassani off the top of the hour say that Honeywell's already trading at a multiple of 26, which is pretty high uh, for Honeywell. So are we sure that, you know, A, that value is such a bargain, and B, that this is the right place for people to go? So again, we think that it is that combination of companies with good growth prospects that are selling at inexpensive valuations. And actually, despite the move in the markets this year, there are many companies that fit that um, qualification. As somebody earlier today mentioned, the growth in the market has been really concentrated in a handful of companies and a handful of areas, while the vast majority of stocks have either gone up less than the market and some have even not gone up at all. So we do believe that you can find companies that are selling at 15, 16, 17, 18 times earnings with good growth prospects. The companies themselves may not look that sexy on the surface, but if you dig down underneath and you can find out that they are participating in many of the same very exciting growth areas like sustainability, 5G, um, autonomous driving, et cetera, that some of the more visible names are um, also participating in, that that is the opportunity where investors can really find great opportunities to buy companies at reasonable prices. And this is particularly true yeah. as you go down into the smaller cap segments of the market. I would note this is the fourth but time since um, the, the 1930s that we have talked about the death of value. And it is even more dramatic this time than it's been in most of those cases. We think that past could well be prologue and that we will see an opportunity for these companies with good growth prospects, where those growth prospects are not yet fully discounted in the prices of the stocks, to benefit from increased right. investor attention.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.